Laurent and Clancy are complaining that they never get to talk. Laurent and Clancy are personalities that hang out with me, and I hear them in my mind. Some of the personalities that I hear in my mind, um, you know, they'll come, like, you know, Christopher Isherwood is one of the characters. He speaks with a British accent. George Gross doesn't come very often, maybe once a month or so. He's a police officer. Uh, our producer, Bob Frizzell, comes through. Not so much lately. He used to do a regular segment. But there's a lot of other personalities that we keep inviting to come and talk. Because they complain that, you know, they never have a chance to talk. And I'm just doing this video for them. Because they were invited, both of them just now, to pick a hat, which neither of them would, and come to the front and speak off the cuff about whatever. Both of them refused. So I'm just going to mark it down in my book that their complaints are invalid. They really don't want to talk. They just want to complain. Is it their fault? In our group, we always say, no one is to blame. Because pretty much it lets us wipe the blackboard clean with, you know, those ba what do you call those things in public school? Those rubbers. What they call a rubber? It's just, you know, they're the little small ones. It didn't do a very good job for rubbing out the chalk on the chalkboard. And then there's the great big long ones that do the right job. They do a good job of cleaning. And then you can bang the big long ones together, you know, and get all the chalk dust in the air for something fun to do. And it makes a loud noise. Today's subject is, once again, how do you deal with humans who are difficult and are problem-causing kind of humans? These humans, I had one. I had one who I looked after because they couldn't look after themselves, primarily because they were too old, but that wasn't really the problem, because there's old people who are 85 years old who can look after themselves. This particular person's problem was they were a glutton. And at 85 years old, um, their legs weren't strong enough to lift the enormous bulk of a huge belly. I never weighed this person, but if I was going to guess, they were probably about five foot eleven. And I have a hard time guessing at big weight. You know, I'm five eleven and I'm about a hundred and eighty pounds when I'm fat. And when I'm fat, I'm not fat. I'm not obese. I have a little belly. And I know I'm fat when I hit 180 pounds. I go, good God. Because, you know, a good weight for me and my frame is about 170 pounds. So if I'm 10 pounds overweight, I go, oh God, this is disgusting. But, you know, at 180 pounds... I can dress to cover that 10 pounds and you wouldn't know. It's more difficult to disguise the extra fat on my face. Makeup or something, not really. But this particular individual at 85 years of age Well, if I'm 180 pounds when I'm fat, this one would be 280 pounds. 
a glutton. And, you know, it's a physical problem because he's so fat. If the person was 85 and 180 pounds, this person would be able to walk. But because he's carrying around 110 pounds of extra avoir du poids, this one needs to go around in a wheelchair. And so, um, well, the person actually got so heavy that they could no longer get out of bed on their own. They needed a mechanical device. You know, a lift. They got to be rolled into a harness and lifted by a mechanical machine into their wheelchair. And then this particular person complained, you know, I'm too flippin' heavy. It's hard on my knees. So the dietitian came and evaluated the whole situation and said, we can put you on a diet. Fine, let's go for it. That would have been, you know, at about two o'clock in the afternoon. At six o'clock, when supper is served, this particular person was served their diet dinner. And it wasn't, you know, like cottage cheese and two pieces of iceberg lettuce. No, it was a meal that I would eat and I would be full and satisfied with. This particular person completely forgot that they had asked to go on a diet. And when they complained about, you know, it was... It was enough for an adult male human to say, I'll be full eating that. No, this person was a glutton. And the glutton instinct kicked in. And the glutton said, uh, I'm still hungry. And when the person was reminded, you asked to go on a reducing diet, the person said, uh, No, I didn't, or something to that effect. And I'm going to report you to the management because you're not feeding me enough food right now. So move your fanny and get me another plate. Now, you might say, well, the person's 85 and they... Well, it's true. At 85 years of age, people get forgetful. I know people that are at 12 years of age that get forgetful. But, you know, how do you forget the fact that you have a huge belly? It's there 24 hours a day. While you're sitting at the dinner table, you can't not notice the fact that your belly is so huge it's hanging over the dinner table. Well... Maybe at 85, when you've got dementia, you can't see it at supper time, and all you feel is hunger. It was probably the same way at age 75, age 65, age, age 55, 45, 35, 25, 15. When did this obesity problem begin for this person? Maybe they were a fat baby. But anyway, the story was, you know, this person said to me, if I wasn't a fat fucking hippo, you wouldn't have a job, bud.
my job being putting this fat man into a harness and a, using a mechanical machine to put him into his wheelchair and wheel him around. This man, when he said this, had an evil glint in his eye. It wasn't dementia. It was demonic. And I know these people, regardless of what their physical age is, a demonic person is a demonic person. And, you know, they'll play the victim. You know, I'm a victim of my obesity. But it's an act. Because really, what this person uses their enormous girth for is to control other people. That's all it's all about. Controlling other people. I can't do it because I'm too fucking fat. And you need a job. In the medical system, they really don't understand what brings on dementia. They've studied it for years and they've looked at brains. But physically, not too easy to figure out what causes people to lose their mind. But if you were to look at it from a spiritual perspective, people lose their minds because they have got faults in their spirits. If you think of uh, Arthur Fielder, was a famous symphony conductor who conducted the symphony well into his 90s. People are capable of amazing lifetimes if they have a good spirit. But the people who end up with dementia have got problems in their spirit, unresolved problems. And what appears to us as dementia, the person just doesn't have it upstairs anymore. They don't have control of their bowels anymore. What is the root cause of it? It's a spiritual sickness. It's regression to infancy. An adult becomes an infant again. Does our society support this? Yes. Society allows spiritual sickness to proceed, throws these people at the medical system, and there's no medical cure for spiritual sickness. If we were able, we, we could cure dementia by getting at the spiritual sickness. But it's not recognized, you know. 